What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own Sega Genesis Mini using an all new front end for the Raspberry Pi called Blast 16. This front end is tailored towards Sega consoles that run well on the Raspberry Pi like the Sega Genesis, otherwise known as Mega Drive in other parts of the world, Sega CD, Master System, and Game Gear. Before we get started, I do want to give you a quick look at the front end. And by the way, this was actually considered for the official Sega Genesis Mini, but due to time constraints, they had to go with something else. The developers of this went ahead and made it free for everybody to use on a Raspberry Pi, and I think it looks amazing. There's one thing to note with this operating system. As of making this video, there is a ROM limit of 600 games, and I would go even less than that. I've had issues trying to add the full collection from Game Gear, 32X, and Sega Genesis. But in my opinion, you're never going to play 600 games, so the best thing to do is pick and choose what you want to put on your system. There are a few things you're going to need to build something like this, and I have a full list in the description. You can get everything on Amazon or eBay. As for the basics, just to get this up and running without a nice looking Sega Genesis Mini case, you're going to need a micro SD card. I recommend 16 gigabytes to 128, and 128 may be overkill because like I said, the front end only supports up to 600 games. To make it easy to transfer the games and the box art to your Raspberry Pi, I recommend using a USB drive. USB 2.0 or 3.0 will work, 8 gigabytes to 128. The most important part of this setup is a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Now this is what the developer recommends. I believe it'll work on a Raspberry Pi 3B, but the developer recommends the Raspberry Pi 3B+, and so do I. You'll also need a way to power this system. A micro USB 5 volt 2.5 amp power supply is recommended. And finally, a controller. You can use any USB controller or Bluetooth controller as long as it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi. And personally, if you just want to go with USB to keep it a little cheaper, I recommend the RetroFlag Classic USB Controller M. This has that Sega 6-button layout, and BlastOS kind of relies on this 6-button configuration. Now, if you don't want to go flashy with it, you do not have to add this case or controller, but it does make for an awesome little setup. The RetroFlag MegaPi case and the 8-bit dough M30 controller. This is also recommended by the Blast 16 developer because Blast 16 already has the shutdown and reset script from RetroFlag pre-programmed, so it's going to work with this case right out of the box. And finally, you're going to need a PC so we can flash Blast OS to an SD card. You can use a Mac, Windows, or Linux machine. Everything that I'm going to show you here will work with all three of those operating systems. I'll personally be using Windows 10, so with all that out of the way, Let's move over to my PC. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We need to get our SD card flashed with Blast 16, and we also need to add some games and box art to a USB drive so we can transfer them over very easily. And as for box art, there's a few places you can get them. If you're already using a Raspberry Pi, you can actually scrape your Sega Genesis games right now and then transfer them over, or you can head over to the Libretro Thumbnails GitHub. Now, if you're using no intro packs, all of these are gonna line up. You just find Sega Genesis through here. There's also EMU movies. You can do a search for Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, download the full pack from there. Both of these sites will line up with no intro ROM sets. And speaking of that, unfortunately, I can't show you where to get them, but all you need to do is a quick Google search for Mega Drive no intro ROM set or Sega Genesis no intro ROM set. And by Google search, I don't mean Yahoo, I don't mean Edge, and I don't mean Bing. Go to the Google browser and search from there. No intro ROM sets are very easy to find. So now it's time to get everything we need to get this up and running. First up, we're gonna download Blast 16. We can go to the download section here, SD card image, this is what we want, it's 1.2 gigabytes. We're gonna go ahead and download it. Now when you download this, you'll also have a user manual when you extract everything, or you can just view it right here. Everything you need to know is in this user manual. There's a lot of stuff in here that I'm not going to go over. I just really want to show you how to set it up and get everything up and running with basic functionality. While the Blast 16 image is downloading, we're also going to need an application to flash it to our SD card. We're going to be using Etcher for this. This works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. I'm going to go ahead and grab the Windows version. When both of these are finished downloading, I'm going to place them on my desktop for easy access, and then we'll get this set up. My downloads have finished. I have Etcher and Blast 16 on my desktop. I'm going to right click and I'm going to extract Blast 16. We now need to launch Etcher. We're going to double click. 
This application is going to allow us to flash Blast 16 to the SD card. And speaking of SD card, I have mine inserted into my PC. It's just named SD. It's a SanDisk 32 gig. We're going to select the image, and that image is going to be Blast 16 that we downloaded. So we'll go into the Blast 16 folder that we extracted. Inside of here, we'll see a .img file. Double click. Make sure you have your SD card chosen. Like I said, mine's 32 gigs. Click continue and flash. Etcher is going to go ahead and take care of everything for us. It's going to flash Blast 16 to the SD card so it'll work on the Raspberry Pi. Just give it a little time to finish up. So when the image is finished flashing, you might receive some warnings like this. We're going to go ahead and cancel and we can shut down Etcher. We're going to go ahead and remove the SD card from the PC. You can go ahead and put it in the Pi right now, but don't boot it up because we need to add games to a USB drive. And then we're going to plug that back into the Pi, get everything set up from there. So over on the left hand side, I have my clean USB drive. This is a 32 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive, but an 8 gig will work. Over on the right hand side, we have the information we need for setting up our games directory. So on the clean USB drive, we're going to create one folder called games. Inside of here, we're just going to be adding Mega Drive games or Sega Genesis games. So we're going to create a folder called MD, short for Mega Drive. Open up the MD folder that we just created. And inside of here, we're going to make one more folder called Box Arts. Now you're going to continue this. So let's say we wanted to get some Sega Game Gear games. Inside of the games folder, we're going to create a folder called GG for Game Gear. Inside of the Game Gear folder, we're going to create Box Arts. And so on and so on. 32X is going to be 32X. Inside of there, we'll do a Box Arts in there also. So on my drive, I have games my Game Gear directory, and my Mega Drive directory. I'm just going to be adding some Mega Drive or Genesis games here, so I'm going to go into my MD folder. And like I said, grab the no intro ROM sets. They're the easiest to use. I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that this will only support up to 600 games, and in my opinion, that's more than enough. If you're looking to add thousands and thousands of games that you're never going to play, use Recallbox or RetroPie. If you want to create a little system that you're going to use, pick and choose the games that you're going to play on this system. So for me, I have a few games here. These are from a no intro ROM set. They are named correctly. I'm going to take these and I'm going to place them right in my MD folder. That's 20 games. Now we need to add box art. I showed you where you could get it. EMU movies or the Libretro thumbnails GitHub. I have mine over here. For the games I'm going to be using. I have all 20 games here. This is the box art that I'm going to use. They have to be named exactly the same as the game. So if you're using no intro ROM set, you shouldn't have any trouble at all. Airbuster USA.png, Airbuster USA. Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle. This is the USA version. Alien Storm World, Alien Storm World. So they have to match the naming convention of your ROMs. And no intro paired with the Libretro or the EMU movie box art sets will work. I'm going to take all these and I'm going to place them right in my box art. So now on my drive, I have games, MD, have my ROMs in the MD folder. Inside of here, we have that other folder called box arts and I have my box art here. So that's it for setting up the USB drive. You're just going to go down the list. Game Gear 32X Sega CD. Link for the manual will be in the description and you also downloaded it when you downloaded the Blast 16 image. So now it's time to move back over to the Raspberry Pi. We're going to plug in our SD card and our USB drive to the Pi. When this boots, it's going to automatically take all of the games and box art from the USB drive and transfer it to the SD card. It's also going to convert all of those PNG box art files that I have to JPEG. So it could take a little while depending on how many games you have. Let's move over to the Pi now. 
All right, so I have my Raspberry Pi inside of the Mega Pi case. I have my SD card and the USB drive plugged in. Like I mentioned at the beginning, you do not need a Mega Pi case for all of this to work. You can use the Raspberry Pi right on the table if you'd like. Blast 16 is already using the RetroFlag safe shutdown script, so I opted to use this. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for the first time. And on the first boot, we're going to get a warning. We do have to turn the Raspberry Pi back off and then on one more time for everything to work. So I'm going to power off the case. I'm also going to remove the power cable from the Raspberry Pi. Give it a couple seconds. We'll plug it back in. And then I'll power it up one more time. Just to clarify, the USB drive doesn't need to be plugged in all the time. It's going to take all of the games and the artwork and transfer it over to the SD card. So pretty much on your first boot, just leave it in. It's going to do its thing. And then later on, we can remove the USB drive. And if you ever want to add more games, just add the new games and box art to the USB drive and power on the Pi. It'll transfer the new ROMs and images over to the SD card. So since I didn't add that many games, it didn't take very long at all. And we're at the main menu. It's now going to scan for Bluetooth game controllers. I'm using this M30 here. So you're going to want to power on the controller itself and then put it into pairing mode. You can find out everything you need when you buy the controller. It comes with full instructions. But I know there's a lot of people out there that are just going to use USB controllers to save money. So we're just going to plug it in through USB. It's automatically going to detect it. And then we'll follow the on-screen prompts to set the controller up. So A, B, C, X, Y, Z, Start. Select is going to be my middle button here. L, R, and we'll also need to set up a hotkey. I'm going to use the same key I set up as select for my hotkey. So you're now running Blast 16 on your Raspberry Pi. It's a very beautiful interface, as you can see. And there's a couple things I want to go over. I purposely removed some box art because this may happen to you, and you might want to delete this game instead of fiddling with adding new box art to it. All we have to do is press start on our controller. We're going to go to tools and delete games. So you can highlight each game you want to delete by pressing C, and I'll do these three here. I'm going to press A. I'm going to confirm it. It's going to do a quick refresh, and those games will be removed from my SD card. There's a lot more to Blast 16 than I'm going to be able to cover in this video, but basically, check out the user manual. Everything you need is in there. Some of my favorite features are bezels and save states, so I'm going to go over those real quick. In order to enable bezels, we're going to press Start on our controller, Go to Settings, Emulation, and from here we can turn Auto Load off. We can change the core, we have some scaling, some filters, some TV filters, and frame, which is our bezel. This will just give us some nice side art here because all of these games are going to be playing at a 4x3 aspect ratio and you'll have black bars on the side. Enabling bezels just makes it fill the screen. Next up is easy save states. Press B on your controller when you highlight a game and you have four save states that you can use four per game, and I'm going to get into it now. We're going to start Gunstar Heroes. And by the way, this is using RetroArch in the background, so you're going to get the same performance that you would on RetroPie or Recallbox. It's going to load up the bezels on the side for us. I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to get into a little bit of gameplay. So I'll move up ahead a little bit, and then I'll do a save. And to save, all you need to do is press your hotkey and the A button. That's going to create a save state for us. If we want to load, we're going to press hotkey and B. It'll load that save state we just created. And to exit the game back into the front end, press your hotkey and C. There are more hotkey inputs and all of that's listed in the user manual. Now I already have auto load set up, so my last save state will automatically load when I start a game. But if we highlight a game and press B, we have our states listed here and we can load whichever one we want. We'll just go right back into it. It's going to start me right back where I was in the game. You can have up to four save states per game. And finally, adding a game to our favorites list. Highlight a game, press C. It's going to put a little star by it. Just add a few here. And if I press up on my controller, it'll go to my favorite. So if you have a long list of games, this is going to make it real easy to find your favorites. And finally, before I get out of here, changing the main logo. At the very top, it says Mega Drive. I'm in the United States, and I've always known this as the Sega Genesis. 
we can go into the settings and change it to the Brazilian logo, European, Japanese, or US, which will change it to Sega Genesis. We can also turn the front end music on or off. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you have Blast 16 set up on your Raspberry Pi. It's an awesome little front end, one of the most beautiful ones that I've ever seen. And hopefully the developers add more systems in the upcoming weeks. I'm not sure if they will. There's no information on it right now. This has been a Sega-based kind of front end here, and I think it's perfect for what it is. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, but pretty much everything you need to know is listed in their user manual. I can't stress it enough. I know a lot of people just want a straight up video showing you how to do everything but if it's already listed and it's easy to read, you might as well just follow that. All links for everything I mentioned will be in the description. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.